Welcome to this video on how to get started with event sourcing in Laravel. I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a partner and a developer at a company called Spasi. I'm active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Meuse. I have a blog, Meuse.be, where I talk about modern PHP development and Laravel. And I also run uh, a service called Odir. It's an uptime monitoring service. And unlike any other service, it will not only verify that your homepage is online, but it will actually crawl your entire site and alert you when one of the pages is down. What are we going to do in this talk? Well, first we are going to explain a little bit of theory about uh, event sourcing. Then we are going to take a practical look at projectors. And after that, we are going to take a practical look at uh, aggregates. So let's first start with theory. So you've probably uh, created this kind of application, what I call the traditional application. Such an application just writes its data in the database. And when you want to update something, you're just going to overwrite the old data. This means that for your application, that all data is gone. It cannot be accessed anymore. Let's take a look at how it uh, looks like in a, in a schema form. So your application writes things to a, data, to a database. We have value X there. And when you want to update something, value Y is written and value X is just gone. We don't know, um, we don't know that value anymore. In an event sourced application, this works a little bit differently. The main logic of your application, it will not write to the, to the database and, and its tables directly. Instead, it will fire off events. And those events, they will get written into a dedicated store. And probably that's just a table called stored events. And those stored events, they will uh, get passed to, uh, to consumers. And a certain kind of a consumer is, is a projector and it tra will transform those events to a format that is usable for the rest uh, of your application. So this is what it looks like in schema form. So our application wants to do something. It sends out an event. We are going to write uh, that event into the database. Of course, when new events come, come in, we are going to write those events as well. Those events, they will uh, get passed to a consumer. And so one type of consumer is a projector. It will transform those events uh, to uh, a format that is useful for your application. And we call that a projection. Of course, we can have multiple uh, consumers that can uh, each create their own uh, projection. And when new events uh, come, come in, the projectors don't need to go through all the events again. They just need to handle the latest event and just update uh, their projection, projections with it. So an event source application is very good uh, for when uh, you have auditing requirements. So when it's very important uh, to know that how uh, the state of an application got in that, uh, that way. Um, event sourcing is also good for um, applications uh, that need a lot of reports where you want to uh, be able to create reports after the fact. So imagine that your event source application is already running uh, for a while and you've collected a lot of events from the past. Well, you can uh, use those past events to make new reports that you uh, didn't know you were going to need when you um, recorded the, uh, the old events. Event sourcing is also very good to, uh, for applications that want to do something when, with the unhappy part. Most applications are going to uh, just record when, when something was successful. But in event sourcing, you can actually do stuff when things were not successful. Uh, imagine that um, a user yeah, hits an error a few times in a row. Then you can see 
hey, this uh, error happened three times in a row. Uh, I'm going to do to perform a special action uh, now. Um, for event sourcing, there is some extra uh, setup required, so your application will uh, become a little bit more complex. But if you want to solve complex problems, event sourcing will actually make the, the solution a little bit easier. So that's a lot of theory. Um, let's just see how we can um, turn this theory into practice. So I've created a, a package uh, together with my team called uh, Laravel Event Projector. So it's uh, created uh, by the SPASI team and it offers you aggregates, projectors and reactors. And we are going to uh, take. Uh, we are going to uh, go over those concepts uh, one by one in uh, in the demo applications. The uh, Laravel event projector is beautifully integrated into into Laravel, um, so it makes use of Laravel's uh, native events. It makes use of. Uh, of uh, of eloquent uh, of, uh, of of artisan um, and it's yeah basically very easy to uh, to get uh, to get started with there are uh, other event sourcing uh, solutions as well they are uh, framework agnostic and they uh, certainly have their place as well but it can be a little bit daunting to to use them for the first time and I believe Laravel Event Projector is the easiest way uh, to, uh, to play around uh, with these uh, concepts. Um, we've written a lot of documentation uh, about this package. Uh, you can view it at our uh, documentation site. Uh, and basically everything that I'm going to say in this video and more is actually covered in that uh, documentation. Now, with that all out of the way, let's just uh, take a look at uh, a demo of the, uh, the application. Um, let's head uh, over to the browser and we are going to go over an uh, application called LaraBank. And it's actually a very simple application. It's uh, like the easiest uh, um, demo for for event sourcing. It's a it's a traditional uh, example. Uh, let me log in here, and in this application, I can um, create accounts. I'm going to create a savings account. Um, so yeah, this is the traditional application. So uh, it doesn't use uh, event sourcing. We are going to deposit some money. We can withdraw some money. We can yeah, withdraw even more money. We go below zero. Uh, let's maybe add some money again. So this is our end balance. Um, let's take a look at the database, the traditional database. So here we have our balance, uh, minus 1,900. But we don't have any history here. We have just that balance. We don't know how um, we got to this uh, this number. It's just only that. Let's uh, take a look in uh, in PHP Storm. See um, how uh, how this application is built, and it's actually uh, very simple. Uh, let's go to the controller first. So whenever we want to store a new account, we are just going to yeah, create a, a new eloquent model. And yeah, by that, it's, it's written to the database. And when we want to update an account, when we want to add some money or subtract some money, um, we are going to call uh, a function on, uh, on the account called add money and subtract money. And inside that function, we are just going to uh, increase or decrease the balance just save the record and uh, and that's it so you've probably done this uh, uh, lots of times it's a it's a very simple application okay let's uh, head back to the browser and take a look at uh, take a look at the same application but this one is built with our event 
projector package. So let me log in first. Uh, it's user at larabank.com. The password is secret, I guess. Yes, secret. Um, let's create another uh, account. So our savings account. And let's do the same thing. We just add some money. Uh, withdraw some money. Maybe go below zero a lot. <laughs> and let's, uh, let's be lucky and uh, receive a lot of money as well. And we're above uh, zero again. Let's take a look at the database of uh, the event projector. Um, if I take a look at the accounts table, you can see that we have that, uh, that balance here. But uh, we also have a stored events table here. And you can see that it actually contains, um, let me reorder that again. Um, that it uh, contains the entire history of what we've done. So we've created an account, we've added some money, we subtract some money, and then yeah, we got a lot of uh, money added to our account. So we have our entire history here as well. Let's take a look at how this was recorded uh, using our package and how our package um, recalculated uh, that balance here. Let's go to uh, PHP Store, uh, or I have, it, I have it open here, I guess. It's the event projector one. And let's go to the controller, the accounts controller here. Right. Um, not transaction count, it's accounts control, this one, yeah. Okay. So what are we going to do when we store, uh, when we want to store an account? Well, this time we're not going to create the account directly, but we have a custom function here called create with attributes. And inside that one, let me hide this, uh, at its heart, we are going to fire off an event called account created. And that account created event is actually quite simple. It has two properties, uh, UID, we're going to review in a bit why we need the UID, and the attributes of the account we want to create. The event also implements uh, an interface called should be stored. And uh, should be stored, it's just an empty interface. And it signals to our uh, package that whenever uh, an event uh, when, uh, when this event will be fired, we should store it. Let's head back to, uh, to that create with attributes function to see what happens. Um, so I've said that uh, I'm going to explain why we need a UID. Well, uh, events, they uh, never have uh, like a uh, return value because events regularly are used to yeah, just decouple some parts of your application and they don't need to communicate back. But in this case, this function, it wants to uh, actually create, actually want to return the account that was just created. So if we were to use a regular uh, auto increment IDs, we wouldn't have a way of knowing, hey, which account will be created here. But if we give it a UID and we create an account with that UID, then we know that when this event has been, uh, been processed, that we can actually retrieve it uh, again and just return that, uh, that uh, freshly created account. So just by firing off this um, event that implements should be stored, our package will just write it into uh, to the database. Let's see how we uh, recalculate uh, the balance here. Uh, back to PHP Storm. Well, we have a, a special class in here called uh, the accounts projector. 
and a projector, like I've said, is a certain type of event handlers, uh, of event handler, and it will act upon uh, events that are being fired. Um, uh, to handle a certain event, you just need to type in uh, it. So this function will get called whenever this event uh, was was fired. So uh, when on when account created event is fired, we are going to execute on account created, and here we are actually going to uh, create our model. So when money added is uh, is fired. Um, we are going to execute on money added and here we are going to retrieve uh, the account by its UID so money added uh, it also has that UID and that amount and uh, we are just going to increase uh, increase the balance and just uh, just save uh, that account that's uh, that's how that works oh I forgot to uh, to show you that in the accounts controller so when we are going to update uh, our account so when we uh, when we for example are going to add money we actually are going to fire off that event uh, money added we are doing the same with uh, with subtract money we are going to uh, send out that event money subtracted and our accounts projector is just listening for that on money added and money subtracted. So for money subtracted, it will actually decrease the balance and uh, just save the account. So that's how uh, how projectors uh, work. Um, for the next part of the demo, I need a little bit more data. So I've actually created uh, uh, a seeder that will see a lot of accounts. Um, and let's just rebuild uh, the database. Uh, MFS is uh, just a little uh, shorthand uh, function here to just uh, migrate uh, the uh, the database from scratch again and just uh, perform uh, all the seeders. And if I take a look at the database here then you can see we have a lot of uh, accounts now here and we have a lot of events uh, that were stored and I want to give you a feeling that all of this it uh, just can be rebuilt from all those uh, those events uh, so um, let's uh, remember uh, this balance so this is like the, the currently uh, highest balance and let me, let's just delete this, this entire table. What we can do with the package is just replay the events to our projector. Let's do just that. So here we have a event a projector, replay all the events, not for transaction count, but for uh, the uh, accounts projector. That's the right name, I guess. Accounts projector, yeah. Let's replay it. And here we are going to replay all the events. And if I uh, refresh here, then you can see that we have that uh, same balance here and all, uh, all accounts are recalculated again. Um, that's, all, uh, that's all nice. Um, I've also said that you can just create other projectors uh, as well. So you can uh, use those, uh, those stored events to create a report. Imagine that for our bank, our director now wants to know, hey, which uh, accounts uh, have the most transactions? And if you had a traditional application and you didn't notice uh, you you didn't record uh, this information yet. Yeah, then you 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 probably say to your director, okay, I'll do it for now. I can't do it for the past, but I'll start just now with it. But if you've actually um, uh, recorded all those events, then you can create that transaction count report for the past uh, as well. 
So let's ju just do that. Um, I have my accounts projector here, but I have also a transaction count projector. And I've put it into, uh, into comments because I didn't want uh, our, our package to be able to see this, uh, this projector yet. Because um, our package, it actually will try to detect all of your projectors in your application. You don't need to register them just by the mere fact that, uh, that it exists. Uh, our projector will uh, uh, pick up on it. So this uh, projector, it will also uh, do some work. It will listen for the money added and the money subtracted events. And when uh, one of those events comes in, it will record uh, the transaction count. And that's uh, actually just yeah, creating a transaction count for, uh, uh, for, for the, the user and it will uh, just increment that uh, that by one. So these uh, transaction counts, they are not per account, they are per, uh, per user. Um, okay, let's go to the database and go to the transaction uh, counts uh, table. Um, and it's empty right now. So let's replay all the events for the uh, transaction uh, count projector. So uh, let me take a look, transaction count projector, yeah. So transaction count projector, and let's replay them. There they go. And here we have our transaction counts. And my first user, it has the, the most transactions. Um, now, the cool thing is, is that you can use this information, information to, um, uh, to display it in your application as well. So I have also here a transaction um, uh, view where I just um, display this information. And if you think of it, this is actually quite cool to display this, this information. We don't need to perform like uh, 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 an advanced query or something. Um, we can actually just use our pre-calculated uh, uh, values here to, to, to display them. So it's if you want to create a certain, a certain view, you can also create uh, a projector that goes with it and just let that projector prepare the exact data that is needed for that view. So actually reading information is very easy um, that's uh, you you hear that a lot with event sourcing that in event sourcing writes are uh, a little bit um, expensive because you need to write it to ev to the events table first and then you can go further but the reads are actually very uh, very cheap because you can just transform it to a format that uh, that your views need so if I take a look at the um, transaction controller, we can just yeah, fetch the data from, uh, from the database. We don't need to uh, do a summation or a grouping here. We just prepared it in the format that, uh, that we just, uh, just want. Um, I should also say I've replayed all the events now. So we have this information, but uh, uh, not transactions. Uh, what was I doing? Uh, I needed to copy the entirely and go to accounts. So now that the, these projectors are uh, are up to date, they can handle new events as well. So if we uh, add another transaction here, the projection. It will be it will be updated uh, it will be updated as well, so that's uh, that's kind of neat. Um, I should also say, and maybe if you have keen eyes, you've noticed this, that we have two kinds of uh, of projectors. We have the regular uh, projector, which uh, will do its work whenever an event is being fired. It will uh, 
that event will go to the projector immediately the same request and will perform the work but we also have a queued uh, projector so when you have um, a projector that uh, does a lot of uh, th that does, does some time consuming work you probably don't want to do it in the same request as the event happens our package will actually uh, fire off a job uh, for that event and call all the queued projectors from from a queue um, let's see what's uh, another thing i need to cover here oh yeah reactors um reactors are classes that uh, uh that handle side effects so they're a little bit the same as uh, as projectors as they uh they act upon uh, events but they only receive the event uh, when it originally occurred. When you're replaying events, they will never get sent to a reactor. Uh, a thing that you could do in a reactor, for instance, is uh, to send the mail. And in this example, we are going to send the director of the FBI a mail whenever big transactions uh, come in. And we probably only want to uh, uh, mail the director when the event actually originally happened and not when we are going to re replay it because replaying will probably be done when the event uh, has, uh, has, has, has occurred in the past. So we don't want to have like, uh, uh, when we replay this three or four times, for some reason, we don't want to send uh, four or five mails to, uh, to the director. The director should only get a mail when the uh, original event happens. Um, so I think that is all I wanted to say, I think, about, uh, about projectors. So I hope you have a good idea uh, uh, about, how they, uh, about how they work now. Um, yeah, let's just uh, continue with another concept called aggregates. Aggregates are a little bit uh, of a difficult uh, concept. They're, they're extremely powerful and useful. And uh, when I was uh, learning event sourcing or, or this, this the ag agg about aggregates for the first time, it took some time to, to wrap my, my head around it. But I'm going to uh, try to explain it to you so you immediately know uh, what, uh, what aggregates do. So uh, aggregates are used to, uh, to model processes. So I know that sounds a little bit abstract. So let's uh, model a little process. Um, in this application, it's also the Lara Bank application, we are going to try to model uh, two rules. The first rule is that an account may not go below uh, $5,000. Uh, uh, and the second rule is whenever a user hits that limit three times in a row, um, then we should send that user a mail with a loan proposal because that user probably is desperate uh, for more money. Um, Okay, let's dive into the, to the example. So imagine that our user uh, wants to subtract $1,000. So what is going to happen first is that our aggregate route is going to be reconstituted from all the previous events. And right now we don't have uh, any events here. Now, why do we want to reconstitute all the previous events? Because we want to, uh, we want to make a decision based on what happens in what happened in in the past. Um, right now, nothing nothing is has happened yet. That's why this is empty and our stored events are empty. So our aggregate route it concludes: Hey, uh, this application uh, or the user wanted to uh, subtract a thousand dollars. I'm going to record the event that money uh, was, uh, was subtracted. And um, just uh, 
just by recording that event here in the aggregate route doesn't mean it, uh, it is written in the database just yet. It will get written in the database when that aggregate route is persisted again. So when it's persisted, we will actually write it into uh, the database. We make use of UIDs here as well. So for this account, we use uh, this UID, which isn't uh, exactly random, I guess. Newly, uh, persist, uh, newly uh, recorded events that are persisted, they also will get passed to the consuming classes. And like we've seen in the previous, uh, in the previous part of, uh, of the demo, uh, a certain type of consumer is a projector that can just store the account for us. So let's now hit that, uh, that limit. So one of the rules that we wanted to implement is whenever uh, an account goes, uh, no, oh no, uh, the, uh, the first rule that we want to implement was that uh, an account may not go below 5,000. So we are going to try to subtract uh, 4,800. Um, and that isn't allowed because yeah, our, we already were at, uh, at minus 1,000. Um, how is the what, what is going to happen so our user wants to do that we are going to reconstitute our aggregate root from previous events so our aggregate root which is just a normal php class in memory it will retrieve all the events for uh, for that, that account and those events will get applied on the aggregate root so we are going to apply the old event called money subtracted and internally, our aggregate root can uh, have like an instance variable where it just calculates uh, that balance. For now, uh, it's minus thousand, and it can calculate. Hey, I'm at minus thousand right now. If I if I would uh, subtract uh, this now, I would go below five thousand. So I'm not going to record an event that money subtracted. I'm going to record another event. I'm going to record that the limit was hit. So when the aggregate root is persisted again, it uh, will get written into the stored events database. And now we know that our uh, account limit was hit. Um, let's, uh, let's do that again. We are going to subtract it uh, again. So we are going to reconstitute the aggregate root um, from the previous events uh, again, so it uh, it gets that uh, money subtracted uh, thousand, it gets that limit, it uh, again it concludes. Hey, I'm um, if I were to subtract this, I'm going to go below five thousand. So I'm going to uh, record that limit hit event again, and when it is persisted, it will uh, be uh, written in the database as well. So remember, we want to implement a rule that when the uh, limit hit happens three times in a row, we want to send uh, a proposed, uh, a loan proposal mail. So we're probably going to hit that. Uh, we are probably uh, are going to do that right now. And sure, we are, our user tries to uh, uh, subtract uh, that money again. So our aggregate root for this account is going to be retrieved from uh, from memory uh, from the previous events again, um, and this time it will uh, it it uh, will conclude again that uh, if we were to subtract four thousand eight hundred, we are going to uh, hit the. Uh, uh, the the limit of our account so we are going to record limit hit again but it also knows hey I've uh, already hit that limit two times uh, the aggregate root is just a, a class that is in memory so it can just uh, add that to an instance variable that instance variable will be three because we hit it now three times in a row and it can record then an additional event called loan proposed Whenever our aggregate root is persisted uh, again, all the newly recorded events will get um, uh, 
will get sent to all the event handlers so we can have our account projector it doesn't need to do anything because it doesn't listen for those events but we have like a reactor here that listens for that loan proposed event and it will actually send a mail to uh, to propose the loan so that's how an aggregate route can be used to implement business rules i know it's uh it's maybe a little bit a uh, little bit abstract so let's uh, take a look at how this works practically um let's go to the uh, the browser again let's go to uh, aggregate so this is uh, the same lara bank uh, application but this time um, yeah we've implemented those uh, those extra rules using aggregates so let's uh, log in again so we have here user at larabank.com my password is you could have guessed it secret login and here we can uh, create uh, another account my savings account um, I'm going to add some money but after that uh, after that I'm not terribly good at saving so I'm going to withdraw some money and here we are going to go below uh, 5,000 so if I want to withdraw this the application won't let me I cannot go below 5,000 uh, I'm going to try that again still I cannot go uh, below 5,000 so if I try to hit it uh, again then I've hit the limit three times in a row and the application sh should send the mail uh, now let's go to a telescope uh, where we can monitor uh, mails that are being sent and right now we haven't sent any mail but if I try this again, so I've now hit the, the limit three times, with any luck, a mail should be sent. And sure enough, here it is, the long proposed mail is being sent. Let's take a look at how this is implemented in, uh, in code. Uh, let's go to PHP Storm. Uh, where's my application? So event projector, we don't need this one again. Here's the aggregates. And let's start again in the uh, the controller so here are functions to store the account and to update uh, the account and um, you can see uh, that we use our aggregate uh, route here again um, let's see how are we going to start this example um maybe we'll just uh go to those uh, uh those true subtract money again yeah okay so we have our account aggregate root here and we are going to retrieve it um for a certain uid and by retrieving it uh, all previous events will be applied upon it um, now let's uh, imagine that there are no previous events so um, we can forget that part a uh, little bit let's see what happens when we are going to uh, perform subtract money on the aggregate route uh, so let's go inside it and here we have that subtract uh, money uh, function and imagine that yeah we have sufficient funds because yeah we haven't uh, we haven't done anything we are going to record a certain event called money subtracted and here if i take a look at that event it just contains the amount it doesn't contain the uid anymore why is that well the aggregate root will take care of that internally if we go uh, take a look back at the um, uh, the controller you can see that we've uh, actually retrieved the aggregate root for a certain uid and it will actually um, add that uid uh, when it uh, writes an event uh, to to the database Ah, with that being said, I forgot to show you the database. Um, 
So the aggregates database. And again, we have our accounts here. We have that minus uh, 3000. And if I take a look at stored events here, here you can see that uh, UID from, uh, from the aggregate. And here you can see yeah, the, the whole history of that account. So it was created, we uh, added some money, we subtracted some money. Then we uh, hit the, the limit uh, a few times, three times in a row. And after the third time, we've recorded a new event called more money needed. And yeah, our uh, reactor that sends that loan proposed mail, it listened for that more money needed uh, event. Um, Okay, back to the code. So yeah, I've uh, shown you in our aggregate route, we had that uh, subtract uh, money thing. We uh, recorded, uh, we record that event. It will be written to disk, uh, to the database when we persist that aggregate route. And newly persistent events, they will be handled, they will be sent to the projectors and here we also have our account projector which will listen for that uh, money subtracted event and it will actually uh, uh, subtract the amount from uh, from the balance for that account now um, imagine we are going to uh, to subtract some some money again so in another request we are going to subtract some money again so we have a little bit of history so what is going to happen is we first are going to retrieve the aggregate route uh, and we are going to reconstitute the aggregate route from all previous events um, so when when it is retrieved, we will actually fetch all the all the events and apply it onto the aggregate route. Um, let's see how that uh, that uh, that applying works. Um, let's go inside the the aggregate route, and you can see here that we have our subtract uh, money um, uh, function, which is used to uh, to um to determine if we can actually record a new event but for every function there's actually also uh, another function with apply before it apply money subtracted and apply uh, money added and those are the events that will get called when an aggregate route is being reconstituted from previous events and we can use that uh, those uh, those methods to yeah, calculate a lot of interesting stuff, like for instance uh, the balance. Um, let me uh, give you a feel that this actually receives all the previous uh, apply uh, uh, all the previous money added events just by logging uh, this. Let's uh, tail. Uh, the log for a bit and when I uh, add some money let's add 10 deposit in our log you can see that we have like our first uh, money added from uh, when I started this example and that new um, and the new uh, money that I just added so when reconstituting the um, the aggregate route, it's, it's got all the previous events. When I do this again, they, then you can see the dance happened again, but we have that, uh, uh, that uh, new event coming in as well. So with all those events coming in, we can calculate the balance in memory because yeah, this is just an instance of a clause. It doesn't write anything by, its, uh, by itself. Um, and if I go to money subtracted here, then um, we can actually yeah, uh, subtract the amount of the event from the balance. And you can see here that balance is just a number here. And um, imagine yeah, that um, we now try to subtract some money uh, and let's see 
what happens if we ha don't have sufficient funds? So this function here has sufficient funds, subtract amount. Let's take a, take a look at it. It gets the amount uh, uh, that we want to subtract here and has sufficient funds to subtract the amount. Um, it will actually uh, return as a Boolean and it will calculate if, if we were to subtract the amount from the balance, if it would, not, if it, uh, would be acceptable for account limit an account limit, yeah, that's also just an instance variable in this uh, in this example, minus five thousand. So imagine if we don't have enough money, then we are not going to record money subtracted, even though we wanted to. We are not going to record that event. Instead, we are going to record that the account limit was hit. And when uh, where we record. Uh, record that um, let's ignore this for now we are immediately are going to persist this uh, this uh, this aggregate root so this newly recorded uh, event is going to be written to the database and then we are going to throw uh, an exception um, could not uh, subtract money which I've uh, let extend a domain exception and I've set up my exception handler when a domain uh, exception happens uh, it should return back ah, yeah, it's here with that exception uh, message so that's how uh, how this works how you can uh, display a message like that um, okay Let's see uh, how we sent that loan proposed mail. So um, I've uh, already said a few times that when an, um, an aggregate root is being retrieved, it will be reconstituted from all previous events and they will get applied upon the aggregate root. And we have here our account limit hit event but we also have our apply account limited. And what we are going to do in that apply, uh, apply account limited is we are just going to increment uh, an instance variable here. And this function here, this needs more money. It will ju just check if that um, account limited is, uh, uh, is three or higher than that. And uh, when it is, um, higher than that then we've hit our limit three times in a row uh, because all the other functions they will reset that uh, uh, that counter and so we're not only going to record the account limit hit but we are also going to record another event so we're going to record two events in one go and uh, that is that more money needed uh, event and um, if I take a look at my reactor, the offer loan reactor, it will actually listen for that more money needed event. And when it uh, sees that, it will send that uh, loan proposed mail. And so that's how that, uh, that works. So you've now seen the code that, uh, that makes uh, this, uh, this work. So we've implemented our two rules, namely that our account cannot go below 5,000 and when three, uh, when the, the limit was hit three times in a row, we need to do something special in this case, um, uh, propose uh, a loan. So an aggregate is being used to model a certain process. Uh, it can, uh, it, it, to, it, it, it can use the past to decide if uh, certain events may be uh, recorded so that's uh, that's how that uh, that works um let's see yeah we've uh, we've almost reached the end of this presentation i've been uh, babbling for for a long time uh, let's see for almost 50 minutes um so yeah, uh, Laravel Event Projector is uh, an easy to use package to get started with, uh, with event sourcing. 
It offers you uh, projectors, so you can just use projectors without aggregates uh, if you want to. It has replay capabilities, so if you have new projectors, you can just replay all the uh, old recorded events uh, to it. And uh, uh, you can also opt to uh, use aggregates to, uh, to model uh, a certain process. So I've uh, mentioned this during, uh, during this video, but I want to repeat it again. Writes are, if you use event sourcing, writes are probably a little bit harder, uh, especially when you need, uh, when you use aggregates, you need to uh, reconstitute them from, uh, from previous uh, events. Uh, there's a lot of processing that needs to be done. Um, whereas in a traditional application, you would just write your change to the database. But because uh, the, the trade-off for, uh, or the benefit you get from writes being harder is that reads are, are easier. I've demoed this uh, also. You can just transform uh, your, your events into a form that is easily consumable uh, by, uh, by your application. Um, I've got this question a few times while uh, giving this presentation at, uh, at user groups and conferences is um, if you take a look at the database, we're all, uh, every time we need to, we want to write something, we are going to retrieve uh, all the, the past events of a certain uh, aggregate, of a certain account in this case, from the database. Isn't that, uh, isn't that bad for performance? Well, actually, if you have like a couple of thousand of events, it doesn't really matter because for a database, it's very easy to get uh, the records because yeah, it just fetches them by, uh, by, by a fixed value, by a UID. So it, this is what a database is good at. Uh, it can just grab the, the right records and the, the aggregates. We've, uh, we've also, uh, also seen this. The aggregates is just a, a class in, in memory, there's nothing being persisted here. So uh, those events, they get, um, they get applied uh, very, very fast. So if you, for, for even a couple of thousand of events, you probably won't run into, uh, into, any, into any problems. Um, now, should you, have, should you have lots of events for a certain aggregate route, there's a, a technique called snapshotting. And snapshotting is basically a way to uh, summarize, um, uh, summarize uh, some, some events. So you can just apply the snapshot instead of all the, uh, the past, uh, past events. It's a little bit of an advanced subject um, that I don't have uh, time to, to explain now because we're almost uh, at an hour here, but if you want to, uh, if you're worried about performance, if you expect that if you use aggregates, I will have like tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of events, go uh, research uh, snapshots. Uh, back to the presentation here. Uh, those Lara Bank uh, examples that I've shown you, I've also open sourced them. You can find them in these uh, repos. I've also created um, an example for EventSauce. EventSauce is um, a, an event sourcing package created by uh, Frank de Jonge, who also gave you the gift of, uh, of Fly System. Um, EventSauce is maybe a little bit harder to, uh, uh, to, get, uh, to get started with. Um, but it is framework agnostic. So if you want to have a framework agnostic uh, solution, uh, go check out events also. It's, uh, it's also an amazing uh, uh, package. Um, so we have a uh, Laravel event projector um, that makes it very easy to get started uh, with event sourcing. We have event source, which is uh, the framework agnostic solution. And there's also a proof which is like the, uh, I think the enterprise great uh, solution. Uh, I've heard from people that are familiar with event sourcing that it's actually very good, but uh, a bit daunting to, to, uh, to get started with. I personally can't tell you anything about it because I don't have experience uh, with this yet. 
So yeah, thank you for um, viewing uh, viewing this uh, this video. Um, Laravel Event Projector is certainly not the first package that our team has made. We've actually created a bunch of uh, packages. Uh, go check them out on our uh, company uh, website. Um, I'm pretty sure there will be uh, something uh, there for you uh, for a future project. So thank you for listening. Bye-bye.